Last week I made a ballast wagon and it worked quite well, but often the stones got stuck. They're just a bit big for the holes at the bottom of the hopper, so I've made a couple of improvements. It seems likely that these little gaps at the bottom of the hopper aren't helping. Perhaps some stones are lodging there. So I cover them up with some plywood, which was very simple. But I'm sure that won't solve all the clogging issues. Last week, we were shaking the whole wagon to free up the stones, which was quite heavy going. And it occurred to me that all that's needed is a horizontal bar that can be wiggled about down there, where the blockages actually occur. So I made a wiggle stick from a piece of pipe. I flattened the ends so I could get a D-shackle on and attached two chains. Our muck fork broke last week. So I was able to use the old handle of that to make a new handle for this. And I'm using chain for strength, but it's also handy to be able to change the length until I find the right height. And I used the off cut of the fork handle and a hook bolt to make a pull hook or something <laughs> for the sliding door. Again, all very simple. Somewhere down here is where things get clogged up. So this is where the wiggle stick needs to be. Now then, let's see if the modifications make any difference. I'm still getting over this old Covid thing, so I don't feel the need to push full loads around just now, so this is just a small load for poor Tim. Now then people, quite a few of you seem to think I'm just covering up the sleepers for some reason. No, that's just the first part. I'm filling up between the sleepers and then coming along later with a mattock to lift them up. A few stones fall in underneath and the sleeper ends up resting on stones and out of the mud. I may have to tamp the stones in further, but we'll see how this works out first. After a little practice, I got the wagon delivering quite a nice pattern of stones. They just needed a little raking and tamping to get them looking quite neat and the sleepers are raised off the ground too. This seems like a good opportunity to see how much weight these rails can take. What does that weigh? Loads. Break the scales now. What does that weigh? Uh, 32 kilos. 32 kilos? Yeah, like a, like a small child, medium child. You could knock off a kilo or two for the buckets. 
myself. 30 kilos. One. Kilos, come on, push it. Can you push it, Dandre? I'll give you a hand round the corner. 300 kilos, that's quite a lot. And the wagon itself might weigh another 100 kilos, so together that's getting on for half a ton of weight on those rails. And as you know, the way I've made these rails is not the recommended way. I did it because it's the cheapest way. But I think this proves that even a simple, inexpensive rail design can still be successful. So far. It's not that difficult, is it? <laughs> no, it isn't. Here, it isn't. But around the corners, it is a little bit. Gosh, just imagine doing that with a wheelbarrow. Huh, through the mud. Have you about four wheelbarrows full in there, maybe? The other suggestion that came up a few times was that I should lift up the track and put down the stones and then replace the track. I am quite baffled by that, though, to be honest. How am I supposed to get the wagon to the right place if there aren't any rails to run it on? And what's the point of having a railway if it doesn't help you do the heavy jobs like moving stones? Maybe you were thinking of model railways? I don't know. Anyway, I'm probably being a bit thick, but I'm happy enough with how this has turned out anyway. <laughs>